Morning folks, Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. I wanted to discuss improvised packs and pack frame straps for just a minute with you guys. We did a series of videos a while back on the Roycroft pack frame where we made that pack frame and showed you how to make straps out of rope or webbing or whatever the case may be that you had at hand to use that pack frame to carry your gear. We've also talked about how to make an improvised PVC style pack frame. And you can make pack frames out of about anything and I'm a big believer in the pack frame but sometimes you're not going to have that luxury. The one thing that you can do yourself a large favor in is by just going out and investing in a cheap set of backpack straps. And it sounds kind of funny to say, you know, why would I want to carry a set of backpack straps with me? But if you can't afford to buy a good backpack, it's not very expensive to buy a set of these military style Alice pack frame straps. They're about eight to ten dollars a set if they're brand new five dollars a set if they're used at most gun shows and surplus stores and you can even find these um, on the net as well the advantage to having a set of pack straps like this is it gives you a huge advantage when carrying loads over distance to an improvised strapping system ropes will cut into you thin webbing straps will cut into you over distance and if you're carrying a very heavy load like game or a keg of water or even a large tarp and all your gear it can get miserable over distance you know uh, I read in Horace Kephart's book the other night he was saying that one pound becomes five pounds from morning to night when it's on your back and basically what he's saying is it feels like it's not too bad when you first start out but after an all-day walk it, it feels pretty pathetic a set of these straps can alleviate a lot of that problem and they can be used for any type of improvised packing system. They could be used on the Roycroft frame, they could be used on a square pack frame that was made in the woods, they could be used on a PVC frame, they could be used on an Alice pack frame that you buy for 20-25 bucks and that's a very good investment as well just a set of straps and a frame. Most of the frames will come with a, a waist strap and a waist strap can become important when you're carrying really heavy loads over distance. But just having a set of these straps in your equipment or in your repertoire is always a good thing to have. It's a multifunctional item in that you can use it for a lot of things. You can use one singly for a strap. You can use one singly for a gun sling. You can use them both together to make pack frames. You can use them if you have to carry a litter. You can use them to make an improvised strap for a haversack. They can be used for a lot of things and they don't take up a lot of room. They don't weigh much. And there's nothing saying you got to carry these with you if you're already carrying a pack. But if you're not carrying a pack, these are a very, very worthwhile investment. So I've got those and I've got just about 40 feet of webbing, just one inch webbing strap, tubular webbing, like you use for climbing. And you can buy this stuff off the internet pretty cheap, um, way less than a dollar a foot, like 30 cents a foot you can buy this stuff for. So, you know, a 40 foot piece of it's going to cost you about 12 bucks, five, six bucks in, in pack straps, and you got what you need. So. What we're going to talk about today is I want to show you another little improvised system that I think works really well. It's really good for wet weather environments. It's good for improvised purposes and it is very adaptable to different setups. And what I've got here is I've got two 30 liter dry bags. And these are the same dry bags that we saw on our website, the camouflaged one with the Pathfinder logo on them. They don't necessarily have to be this dry bag. Any dry bag would work for this. Okay, so I've taken these two 30 liter bags and I have put the contents of my kit in these bags for the coldest of conditions, if I were going to sleep in a very cold weather environment. And we've talked about before that over 70% probably of what you carry in your backpack should theoretically be sheltering type options because most other things are carried on your person. You may have some redundancies of the first five C's in this bag, or you may have a redundant container, redundant fire starting material and things of that nature and some redundant cordage, but you're going to have that stuff on your person as well. You're going to have your cutting tool, your ferro rod, probably a bandana in your pocket, trash bag maybe in your back pocket or a cargo pocket to use for rain gear in an emergency, and some type of cordage wrapped up and bundled into your pocket as well. And if you have those things, you're in pretty good shape. If you were to lose these contents, you could still survive if you had to. But we're not talking about survival right now. What we're talking about is we're going out into the bush to plan to camp for the night, and we're using an improvised pack type system. The good thing about this is I can separate this into two different content bags. They're both completely waterproof. They both will float. 
and I can get into them easily. If I make this pack out of a tarp, where I fold the tarp over and put it, strap it down to a frame, or just strap it together like we're going to do this, and then make an improvised backpack out of it, I have to open that whole thing up to get to anything content-wise inside. Whereas with this, I can just open the top of one of these waterproof bags, access the contents, not have to take anything apart necessarily, and then roll it back up and I'm on the go again. So let's talk about what we're going to do here. We're going to take these bags and we're going to lay them down side by side, just like this. Then we're going to take one of our pieces of webbing. And what I've done is I've taken 40 feet and cut it in half. I've told you guys before, I don't like anything shorter than about 20 feet if I can help it. 25 feet is even better whether it's cordage or rope. Um, the good thing about having this in two pieces is that if I decide to go with a hammock type option, I can use these for my hammock straps. So all I'm gonna do here is I'm going to wrap this around by just tying myself that same type knot in here that we used before, that's a slip knot. But if we put an overhand knot in this end of it, there's no way it can go anywhere. So we're just going to tie that overhand knot in the end to give, it, give us some security. And then this part will slide through to there, and that's as far as it's going to go. Then I can use this for a cinching type knot. And I'm going to start about one third of the way up with this, just like this. Put them together and cinch them down to each other just like this as tight as I can get them. Now I'll wrap around that a couple times, just like this. Then I'm gonna come up between them. Just like this. And tie this off. And I'm just gonna give myself a simple half hitch in here. It'll be easy to get undone that way. But because all that line's pinched in between those two bags, it's not going to come undone easily on the trail. Then I'm going to come to the top and do exactly the same thing. Now I've got this. All right? Real, real simple. I want to keep this as compressed as I can because I don't want this wider than my back or it's going to be snagging on trees and scuffing off stuff, hanging on bushes and all that business I don't want happening. Now, I've got my two pack straps. The beauty of these pack straps is, and there's lefts and rights with these, so you kind of have to watch that, but the beauty of these straps is the way they're made, they pop apart just like this so that you can lift up the keeper, adjust the line out, put this anywhere you want it in here, pull it right through that loop that's already made into the material there for the pack frame, and you've got the bottom of your strap already connected. Then all you have to do is put it back in there, shove that clip in, it's got a button, it buttons over the top of it, and you've got this quick release here to give yourself plenty of slack to pull that strap down and you just take the other side of your strap and come up through the bottom, just like that. Or you can come through here if you want to, but it's easier to come through here. Come right through there like that. Bring it up here. And just thread it through, just like you would on a regular everyday pack frame, or on a, an Alice pack frame itself. Just like that, and that becomes your shoulder strap. And you can play this out for wherever you need it at the bottom. And then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. The beauty of these straps is exactly what I said. They will work with any type improvised frame system. From a Roycroft frame to a square pack frame to a PVC frame to a metal frame that you can buy. They'll work with any of them and they're very, very versatile. So I like that about them and I like the fact that they're cheap and they're common man. So that you can do it yourself very easily with this stuff. Okay, when we're ready to hit the road, all we got to do is grab this dude and put it on just like any other pack, sling it over the top or whatever the case may be, 
get those shoulder straps up there pull down on those adjustment straps just like that and we're ready to rock and roll piece of cake I love these straps because they got that single pull release system on them like newer pack designs have that makes this thing really easy to shuck it on and off really easy to adjust it on the trail if you want to and if you wanted to you could tie something between here to pull these closer on your chest and that's a thing that a lot of modern backpacks have on them and I never really liked it um, and I was reading in Horace Kephart's book he didn't like it either because it felt like it constricted his chest when he was exerting himself climbing hills and things like that it restricted his breathing and I feel the same way so I like it just like this it doesn't bother me these pads are really nice and thick they're comfortable on your shoulder they don't bind or anything as long as you don't have too much weight on here and if you had a lot of weight you know put a frame on there with a belt and you'll be good to go make an improvised frame to go to lash this to like a Roycroft frame and make yourself a belt with the excess from your straps and you'd be good to go but that's a real simple design real simple way to make a backpack that will carry everything that you need even in the coldest of environments you'll be able to get at things easily without having to undo the whole pack if you pack it up into a tarp configuration like we showed before in the Roycroft video you can just open one of these at a time get into it get what you need out put it back in okay real quick let's talk about this um how easy is it to put a pack frame on this well as simple as this okay I can take that Alice pack frame take these straps off connect them here connect them here tie this right to this and I've got a pack frame then I've got a useful item I can use beyond just carrying my gear well worth the investment of 20 25 bucks they usually come with straps for that price and then you've got a very multifunctional piece of gear that you can use that I've been using since the very beginning this Alice pack frame is totally totally versatile to change your setup up with okay so real quick discussion about packs as you guys know I'm a big believer in bucket style systems I don't like packs that have 88 pockets on them tactical is not always practical I don't want to have to look through 88 pockets to find what I'm looking for in an emergency under duress or you know if I'm all stressed out and tired I want to know that if it's not in my pockets or on my person it's going to be here or here and I know from the way I pack my system that this bag only contains my sleep system it's my black arctic bag and my bivy sack so there's no need for me to get into this bag unless I'm going to go to bed because I don't want this thing to get wet and I know that this bag will keep it dry because the original prototype of this bag I still have from over a year ago in a different color camouflage and I use it almost daily you guys have seen it in dozens and dozens of videos I use it all the time and I've never destroyed it this side has got everything else in it that I need for my shelter system plus any redundancies or the rest of my 10 C's if that is what I choose to carry so if I need something I know where it's at if I need to access it I can get in here without ever taking this thing apart if I want to I have a roll of bank line in there I have my headlamp in there I've got a six inch redundant ferro rod in there Baco Laplander saw backup knife more bushcraft black I've got this netting very multifunctional we've talked about before I can use this to wipe my brow with wipe my hands off clean up with personal hygiene whatever the case may be and then I've got a couple redundant containers in here I've got that 0.75 liter titanium pot with a bale handle on it and I have a Vargo titanium bot that basically just contains spare cordage spare fire starting materials like fat wood an extra drinking cup and an extra lighter so basically this becomes my redundant fire kit inside here plus some extra cordage all contained in something that has a seal on it there's actually an o-ring seal on this to keep it waterproof and it just gives me another container that I can boil in these two become containers if these are empty they're 30 liter water bags as far as that goes okay there's an extra black plastic 55 gallon 3 mil garbage liner in there that I can use for emergency rain gear or ground cloth 
And the only other thing that's in this pack now is my tarp and my wool blanket. That's it. Tarp wool blanket here, MMS sleep system, the black bag, and the bivy here. That's it. Redundant kit on the top and what's on my body. I'm always going to have either the water bottle cup and stove kit on my person lashed over me like a haversack type situation in a bottle carrier or I'm going to have the canteen cup and stove. Okay guys, if I had to guess, I'd say that thing is, you know, a little under or right at maybe 30 pounds for that complete kit and uh, I wouldn't be afraid to go out with that kit in the winter not at all get the waist belt done up strap that thing down okay there we go piece of cake guys nothing to it okay guys so that's just a really really simple method of packing your gear um, very budget conscious very common man a lot of people I hear complain about these straps for the Atlas pack and say that they're not comfortable, this, that, and the other thing. And if you put 120 pounds on this thing, they're probably not comfortable all day long. But I can tell you right now, they're a darn sight better than a piece of rope or just a piece of raw strap. And there definitely ain't no other pack strap on the market for five to 10 bucks that's gonna last a lifetime like these things do. So I would encourage you to go out and get yourself a set, keep them with your stuff, set them aside for a time that you need them practice with them a little bit but definitely keep them in your you know saving up for good measure stuff because you never know when you're going to need them and they definitely work dandy fine for a lot of stuff i'm dave canterbury at the pathfinder school i appreciate you joining me for this video i thank you for everything that you do for me for my school for my family all my affiliate sponsors instructors and friends and i'll be back with another video as soon as i can thanks guys